Hello, good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today, with the current influx of actual super battleships and super cruisers that are ruining clan battles at the moment, along with making higher tier frustrating, I thought today it'd be interesting to take a look back at what was the first super cruiser ever added into the game, and that is the tier 9 premium Soviet super, I guess they're just called large cruisers now, <laughs> Kronstadt. And man, this ship was introduced back in May of 2018. And I remember when this ship came out, it was a massive deal. That This is essentially a small battleship in a cruiser slot with 305mm guns and around the same amount, I think it's actually a little bit more HP than the Iowa, a tier 9 battleship. And man, Looking at this thing and what we have in the game today with like the Conda and the Annapolis and the other announced super cruisers and super battleships and other super ships that have yet to come out. Wow. Slipperly slope, shall we? Quite the slope, that is. So, the Kronstadt, what is it? So, there's also another reason that you might be interested in looking at this ship. This is the ship that, well, the hull that will be on the Sevastopol, that other tier 10 premium Soviet cruiser that I think has kind of been stuck in dev hell now officially. She was announced, what, four, five, six months ago, and she's never showed up. And what the Kronstadt and the Sevastopol are, it was a cooperative project between the Soviet Union and Germany in the 1930s, they are supposed to design this cruiser together, the Russians designed the hull, and it was supposed to have 15-inch guns provided by Germany, the same 15-inch guns that are actually on the Siegfried. But obviously, when Barbarossa happened, that went out the window, and this was the uh, drawn-up design by the Soviets to replace the German 15-inch guns with nine 305mm Soviet guns. And these are the same caliber of gun that are, is found on the Stalingrad, but the Stalingrad has a bit uh, more upgraded version of those guns. It, it's much more accurate. Uh, Stalingrad has 2.65 Sigma, where Kronstadt has 2.05 Sigma, and Stalingrad's guns also do 200 more damage per salvo. But the shells are very similar in terms of, of course, they are Soviet AP, and they get all the goodies that are accompanied by having Soviet AP on your cruiser with large caliber guns for its tier. So that's what the Kronstadt is. So let's take a look at that armor scheme, because that's Again, this is the hull that is going to be on the Sevastopol. And the armor, at first, first glance, is pretty decent. You have a 25mm bow. You do have an icebreaker slat here, but it is still just 25, so you don't have an icebreaker bow like other Soviet large cruisers do. You have a 27mm upper belt. Main belt's 230mm. And the lower belt's right at the waterline, is 230 as well. You go around back, there's no strip covering the stern in any way, shape, or form. It's 25 millimeters all the way around. Stern deck's 25, central deck is 27, and bow deck is 25 as well. You strip away the armor of the Kronstadt, and her citadel is just at the level of the waterline. It's a little wonky shape up here at the front, and her upper plate if you add that on top of that 230 millimeters on top of the citadel so no type of turtle back armor but it is just below the waterline however this is not a very hard ship to citadel as i'm sure you're seeing in the match you're watching in the background and the match you're watching in the background it's not a super high damage game or anything but it gives you guys a really good idea of what it's like to play this ship in today's world of warships now this ship is often touted as one of the rare ships you can get when it comes to like the Christmas container event or the summer container event, which uh, I don't think they're doing this year. They would have probably popped it off by now, but we'll see. There's still a couple more updates to be had during the summertime. So, that's her armor. Survivability, like I mentioned, she has 75,100 hit points, which is like tier 9 battleship levels of HP, and a 34% torpedo damage reduction. And just speaking on the survivability, just in the form of the hit points here. Back when this ship came out, the armor scheme, 25mm balancer with no type of icebreaker bow, does mean you are going to get overmatched by a lot of higher tier ships, even back then, of course, too. Today, there's so many more sh battleships at higher tier, which, which can, of course, easily pin 25mm of armor. But that's not really where a huge drawback is. 
back in the day, that was kind of like a balancing fact because this thing has 75,000 HP and it had cruiser burn time back in ye old days. But today, this thing has battleship burn time and there's no skills on the cruiser uh, commander skill tree to build into that at all anymore, like we've mentioned before with other super cruisers. So now this thing just burns. And the only thing you can do is put the um, fire flag on and the two damage con modules. Besides that, you're going to burn. And you're going to burn very easily, on top of being easily overmatched by just about every battleship you can see at tier 9 and above. And again, keep in mind, this hull is going to be on the Sevastopol. So, yeah. Going on down to her artillery, like we talked about beforehand, the same caliber of gun you will be seeing on the Stalingrad if you pick up the Stalingrad, but they are a little bit different. Um, with the build that I am running on my Kronstadt right now, which uh, I'll pop it up on screen right here, I do have the reload module on and not the range module. This gives the Kronstadt a reload time of 16.3 seconds, 180 time with the turrets of 35.3 seconds, maximum dispersion of 225 meters, and a maximum range of 18.2 kilometers. Feichi does a maximum damage of 4,200, has a 25% chance of causing a fire on target, and it can pin 51 millimeters of armor, and though that can put the tubes at 920 meters a second. The AP does a maximum damage against the build that I'm running on it of 9,450, and a initial velocity of 900 meters a second. So, the guns pack one hell of a punch. There's no denying that. But the issue with the Kronstadt is more of getting them to actually land on target. Because again, you have 2.05 Sigma and a 255 meter maximum dispersion at 18 kilometers, which leads to some pretty wily shots. Now, granted back in the day when tier 9s were in tier 7 games quite a bit more, that was obviously not that big of an issue because, shoot, you shoot a tier 7 cruiser with these shells, you only need to land one or two for them to be absolutely just devastated, let alone actually landing all of the shells. And of course, just like Stalingrad's guns, these guns can easily set it all battleships at range. Again, getting them to actually hit the part of the ship that you need to hit in order for that to happen is a bit more of a challenge, but it can still happen. However, back three, well, man, four years ago now, whew, time flies. Back four years ago, it was much easier to play in at a medium range with the, with the Kronstadt than now, because, of course, you couldn't be burned out as easily. There weren't as many HE spammy ships. TV rework wasn't a thing just yet, and super ships were very much not a thing, nor were submarines a thing back in the day, nor was the commander rework a thing back four years ago. We've come away since then. So, for most of the matches... You're going to see this. I attempted to get close because I knew the, the uh, Kronstadt's guns needed to be fairly close. Not, you know, not in somebody's teeth, but definitely at a medium range of about 12, 13, 14-ish kilometers is definitely where you want to be generally about for the Kronstadt guns to actually be able to consistently land shells on target. I made that mistake in the beginning of this match because, you know... Who thought going anywhere near the match in the first 15 minutes of the... Anywhere near the cap, I should say, at the beginning of the match in the first 15 minutes of the match uh, was a good idea. But yeah, so I, I did that. I got absolutely slapped. And now I'm forced to play at longer ranges, which is typically what happens in higher tier. Now you sit back at 18, 19 kilometers and you kind of just take pause shots at one another until one side either collapses or the, the game ends, which is pretty frustrating in Kronstadt. It... It is, thankfully, made up for with the shells, and if you do have battleships to shoot at, the dispersion isn't a massive deal. You can still easily land two or three shells every salvo, and again, with the guns that you have on the Kronstadt, you'll probably be doing at least 5 to 6k damage, and with the reload mod like I'm running on the ship, the reload's pretty generous, and of course, when you get a tactical AR boost like I did at the beginning of this match, you even get a little bit more out of it as well. So, yeah, playing at long range is not fun in the Kronstadt, but it can still hang in there if you have lots of battleships to shoot at like I did on this flag out of Constellation and a Republic and I think an Amagi too that I was able to pretty much land good shots on for the duration of me sitting on this side of the map and plus two we had actual spotting so that was another plus N not so much in some other games where apparently no one wanted to spot anything so that's much less engaging in that situation. Alright, moving on from the guns, which again are definitely the highlight of the ship. Um, 
AA, she has weak AA. This was advertised when the ship was announced. You do get a DFAA consumable, but your A rating is 60. It's, it's, it's not much. It wasn't much back in 2018. It certainly is not much today. Maneuverability, the ship does go 35.2 knots with the speed flag equipped. Pretty fast little boat here. She turns in 840 meters. Fairly large turning circle for a Soviet ship. Well, fairly normal turning circle for a Soviet ship, I should say. It's actually on the smaller side for a Soviet ship. And the rudder shifts in 14.9 seconds. And her concealment, 12.7 kilometers with the module and the commander skill, which is very nice. 12.7 kilometers is a pretty low range for a large cruiser like this, so you can easily dictate the terms of your engagement. What's also good about that 12.7 kilometer concealment is that that is just a little bit over the range of the Kronstadt's radar, because naturally it's Russian, it gets radar. 12 kilometer radar, it's active for 27.5 seconds, and of course you can build into that to get it to last a little longer. Reloads at 114 seconds, you can get four charges of that with Superintendent. She does of course get a heal. This heal regenerates 450 HP back per second, it's active for 28 seconds, and reloads at 76 seconds, four charges of that with, again, the commander skill. And again, spotter or DFAA, I run spotter because definitely in today's meta, it's much easier to get out at range with that spotter and maintain your good rate of fire with the module equipped. So Kronstadt, like I mentioned here, we've come quite a way since the Kronstadt. Pretty much every single super cruiser or large cruiser, I'm sorry as they're called now, that has been released since the Kronstadt has been released is infinitely better in many ways. Stalingrad is of course massively better. Alaska is infinitely better. A gear is better in my opinion. A gear is much better in my opinion. That the shells are much more accurate. Um, again, I could go on. Siegfried, uh, the Co the Conda, not the Conda. What's the um, the tier nine French super cruiser? Uh, whatever it is, w whatever the big baguette. Is called. All those, in my opinion, are much better than Kronstadt. Kronstadt's really only worth it because it has the radar. Like when we had the Tier 9 clan battle season, you know, Kronstadt is fairly worth it then because you have the radar. The ship does have a lot of HP. When you're in a situation when you have a car, no, that's the ship I was thinking of. Look at the French naming all their super cruisers with C's. Um, when you have the utility of the radar, and again, you're only facing one battleship, then at, in those situations, yeah. Kronstadt's a pretty darn good ship. And sure, when finding other cruisers, Kronstadt's really, really good at doing that. Because again, you got the, the wonderful 3-5mm Soviet guns with Soviet AP that hits much harder than they have a right to. And you only need a couple of shells to really hit on a cruiser that's giving you a little bit too much ankle there for those shells to really bite and remove half of that ship's health. So in those situations, she, she is quite good, but I definitely would not throw hundreds of dollars trying to get this ship. And if they slip this ship into the next auction, like I suspect they might do, uh, definitely not worth it. I mean, you guys saw, I slipped up once at the beginning of the match and I went down to like two, uh, a third of my health. The ship is easily punished in today's world. She, her, her weakness of being overmatched by, you know, a lot of battleships at tier nine plus, but being compensated for it by being, of course, a very flame retardant ship isn't a thing anymore. So she just gets overmatched and she gets burned down so easily now. And the guns are frustrating to use in most situations. So, yeah, if they go and wave this ship in an, in an event or advertise it in a container, don't worry about picking it up. You aren't missing much, unfortunately. It is sad to see how this ship that we were once all captivated by has been kind of just power crept to... Uh, mediocrity now at best in my opinion but anyway guys that's my two cents on the crotch chat let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below hope you're all having a wonderful tuesday if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel we're on our way to 40,000 subscribers and i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you're all having a wonderful week and i hope to catch you guys in the next one